an LED strip, a rather long LED strip, I believe it's about 2 meters long, and I bought it uh, from AliExpress, um, and I was hoping that I'd get it in time for Christmas, and I actually did get it in time for Christmas, um, but I didn't get the chance to make a video about it until now, so here it is. So basically, uh, this is indeed a an high density LED strip, but you might notice something uh, unusual about it. And if you look closely, you will see that. If you don't focus for a moment, uh, the fact that there are three connections to each LED, and that's because it is a neo pixel strip, uh, or uh, rather, I should say, a WS J one two strip, um, which means that it is controllable electronically with uh, an Arduino. Uh, and I can actually show that. I've just plugged the Arduino in now, and uh, because it's connected to the LED strip with only the data wire, not the power wires, uh, I'm going to connect the uh, LED strip now. And, yeah, it's glowing green at the moment, but the cool thing about these is that they're individually controllable, meaning that each one of these uh, uh, chips, you can set uh, the exact color uh, using the program that I've uh, written into the Arduino. Uh, right now it's just a simple test program to uh, check all of the LEDs are working correctly and just fill it up with uh, a particular color. Uh, but uh, if you could arrange it like into a uh, grid uh, of some type, uh, you can actually show images on it, which is really nice. I'm not going to do that though. What I bought this trip for is basically to just uh, put all around the uh, Windows perimeter. Uh, and uh, basically that will be like um, a inward pointing uh, Christmas light because uh, there is a thing of putting Christmas lights on your windows in winter for New Year's Eve, because apparently Christmas isn't much of a thing here. And if you look outside my window, uh, you can actually see that there are uh, a couple of windows where there are Christmas lights already, uh, most notably that one over there. Um, and I believe there's uh, a couple in the distance over there. Yeah, that was one. Uh, so basically, it's a thing that people do. Unfortunately, the uh, controllers used in most of these are like really blinky and annoying. And this is one of the examples of the kind of annoying controller that I don't like. Uh, uh, you might notice that there is a sort of uh, rolling shutter going on, uh, and that's because to the eye, these are visibly flickering because of the controller box uh, right over here. I'm just going to pan the camera a bit. Yeah, this one. Uh, and, uh, well, like, it looks the part when it's just on static. Um, and uh, with light on, it's a little bit rolling shuttery, but it's mostly all right, I guess. Well, here's the problem. Um, if you turn the lighting off for a moment, and this is where I'm just going to have to issue an eclipse alert for this video, uh, if you turn it off, and then turn it back on, it reverts to demo mode, and you can't change it. And the demo mode has all of these really sort of annoying flashy patterns, uh, and there's like eight modes that it has to cycle through before you get to static. Uh, which is basically mm, really fucking annoying. Uh, and I really want to like, make uh, something like this, but uh, my own, so that I can control what it looks like. Uh, this uh, controller box, uh, which um, is responsible for all the flashing that you saw, um, is basically, uh, well, for once, uh, it's... Um, it has the CE, the uh, Chinese expletive mark, uh, which means it's going to be good. Um, for another thing, it says that it's IP44 rated, and let me tell you, it's fucking not. Um, it says here that IP44 is 
protecting against um, ingress of most wires, slender screws, large ants, etc. And this I can give it, uh, well, provided you don't push it a lot. But the other four is about splashing of water. Water splashing against the closure for any direction shall not have harmful effect, utilizing either an oscillating fixture or a split nozzle with no shield. Basically, this is a fucking lie. And let me tell you why it is a lie, because if you look here where all the wires come in, well, first of all, uh, the actual holes are really big. But another is that you can just um, um, get uh, this thing off, uh, exposing all of the live connections in here for a child to touch, which is really fucking amazing. I really like that. And you do have to break the plastic on this in order to do so. But I don't believe that a child will have much problem doing that. Uh, basically, I've long since suspected that these are uh, usually sold in China as a population control device. Uh, basically, if you touch it, you'd be dead. Uh, but, you know... This is sketch as frig, I should say. Uh, so, um, I wouldn't uh, expect it to be sold in any sort of uh, civilized country, which is why you can get them here in Russia. So those Christmas lights are shit, but you already knew that because you saw them on Big Clive's channel. Perhaps you didn't see them on Big Clive's channel. I put a link in the description below for... Um, a video of his describing these and a um, text tutorial on how to make them stop flashing. I've already, I've actually had one of these, uh, one of those taken apart and I've connected it to a relay module and maybe I'll feature that in a future video. But at the moment, let's just focus on this uh, LED strip and actually I have not just one LED strip but two LED strips of the same type. Um, in order to fully encircle the window up there, um, and uh, basically I really want to make uh, some sort of um, a thing that will... So basically like Christmas light, but uh, not as shit as that one. Uh, uh, so currently it's still on its uh, test program, Let's just plug that in for better viewing. Um, uh, while it's doing its thing, I will have to note that the uh, USB cable that I'm using uh, is pretty low quality. I'd say it's like, actually it's tangled somewhat in a rather precarious way. Uh, there we go. Uh, so the cable isn't uh, all that awesome of quality. Uh, you can see that the cable, the internal wires in there are like not a very sort of uh, high thickness, you'll see. Uh, also the uh, Arduino seem to be restarting there for a bit. Let's just put that to one side. Uh, so basically uh, even though that these are not uh, what you'd call high current capacity um, cables, uh, they still manage to power this uh, whole LED strip uh, pretty nicely. In fact, uh, let me just turn off the light here for a moment. Uh, and uh, um, bring the exposure down a bit. Uh, and when uh, it's on white, it's using all of the uh, free RGB chips at once. Uh, and you'll see that uh, towards the end, uh, it's actually still uh, relatively white. Uh, whereas uh, in the other strip I've tested, which I'm not going to be showing here because it's quite far away. Oh, go on then. So previously I've been testing with this LED strip, which has a much lower uh, LED density, as you can see here. It's got like, um, if we'll do a side by side here for a moment, uh, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, LEDs um, 
on the same distance as to here. Uh, so basically it's about, uh, you know, two and a half times as dense, or maybe five times as dense. I can't really do my math at the moment. I got a math exam coming up, so that's going to be great. Uh, but the point is that I've tried it with these, and apparently because there's uh, much more copper in the way of the uh, power run. Like, here you've got all this distance for the power to traverse before it gets to the next LED. Uh, because of that, um, uh, more uh, there have been more wire resistance in the strip material itself. Uh, so, uh, the voltage on the other end, on this end, was dropping much faster than on this one. Um, so that thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with these. But another thing could be the um, wire material resistance because in this particular setup I've only connected the data wire with this uh, DuPont style connector. Uh, but in that case I actually had the uh, two power wires uh, wired like this. Uh, which uh, might have contributed to the uh, overall resistance uh, too. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't really care about that at the moment because I've got this now, and I'm going to be planning to hang out on there. Uh, another reason why I want to uh, do this as opposed to the uh, other LED uh, thing, uh, the other Christmas light, uh, other than that being just uh, plain old dangerous, uh, is uh, because I can actually control what's being displayed on this one. So if I just uh, comment out the part that's uh, doing the color wipe and add in the one that does the rainbow, um, you'll see that uh, the rainbow effect is actually quite nice looking. Um, and Certainly it will be even more nice looking when it's up on the window, uh, which I think is going to be quite uh, like interesting to look at, and not as um, eyesore as that one. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether uh, this particular one will be uh, much better, but the good thing about this is that I can actually write programs that will uh, change the... Uh, uh, type of light that this emits, uh, which is always quite nice. I do like programs. Another reason why I want to do this project is because uh, basically it's more pragmatic that way. So I can uh, do some interesting things like um, light up the... Uh, basically use it as an alarm clock um, in such a way that it turns on the light uh, uh, gradually. So I just in the test script there that fades it up and down and it's opening the camera out a lot so that's always nice I actually locked the exposure on here no I don't believe I can I can just uh, let us warm the camera out and the point is that by using this instead of a natural uh, light from the sun which isn't going to be available for a while now uh, I can basically uh, fix my sleep patterns with this, or so I hope. I have seen some studies that indicate this could be possible, so here's hoping. Another thing worth noting is that so far the LED strip has actually been running on one-fifth of its full intensity. So if we look at the wall here, uh, you can see that it's um, not as bright as you might have thought, uh, like it's uh, uh, sure it's bright when it's dark, uh, but with uh, some light on, in fact let's just get some light on, with some light on it, the light is completely swapping out the uh, red uh, fading up and down, so this is not very helpful, however when I put the brightness up to max, it is actually noticeably brighter. I mean, I'm not sure uh, if that's uh, really visible on camera because of the exposure control and everything. But if I just turn on the same light I had before, 
Or actually you can't see it with that light as well. Maybe with just one lamp. Mm. Well you can see it a bit with um, the naked eye but not with the camera. So that was a failure but still the uh, LED strip as a whole now looks uh, considerably brighter like uh, from naked eye and I'm guessing from the camera as well. So this is something. In fact, I wonder, because I've tested the other LED strip on full intensity, how is this one gonna fare with all of the LEDs set to white? And the answer is not all that better from the other one, honestly. Uh, if you look here, you'll actually see, um, even on the camera, you can see a gradient from uh, pure white on uh, this end um, of the strip. It would be better if it was uh, swapping out so much. Uh, let's just try and adjust that real fast. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see that. It would be better if I just turned off the uh, fading effect at all, honestly. So let's just do that real quick. Yeah, so now it won't be fading up and down, it'll just be uh, on max brightness. And you can see here that the beginning of the strip is pure white, but the end of the strip is more or less pure red. Um, the reason for that is indeed the resistance of the actual um, uh, strip material. And, uh, and in fact, if uh, when I'm touching it, it does feel kind of warm. So perhaps that's an issue. Uh, so uh, let's just let's just not use the maximum intensity. And also, if you're actually using it in a professional setting, you might want to consider ejecting power into the strip from this end and maybe from oops, maybe from somewhere in the middle too, uh, because oops, what's that about? Mm, I believe I've just shorted something together. Yeah, I think I've shorted these uh, terminals together. Uh, so my point is that you might want to consider injecting power into the strip at some point. Uh, perhaps over there um, on this end because uh, it's a little bit yellow on here. Mm. Uh, so you inject power into the strip at multiple points to overcome the uh, resistance of the actual PCB material. Also, just in case you're wondering, the reason it goes red at the end uh, is because uh, the uh, there are three chips in there: uh, red, the green, and blue. And red chips are uh, the uh, they light up significantly at uh, lower uh, voltages. Uh, so basically, um, it can run on the same intensity with a lower voltage. So the green and the blue ones um, basically uh, just um, gradient away um, quicker. Uh, and uh, the red one is uh, all that you can see by the end. So basically, that's uh, what's happening. So actually, I was wrong. These aren't... Uh, uh, much better in that regard as compared to the other ones. Well, at least now I can tell you what exactly it looks like. And actually, if I disconnect the end part, uh, it rebalances itself significantly. So you can see the uh, end here. Uh, ah, that's the uh, one I just disconnected. You can see the end here is just a tad yellow, not. Uh, as red as that one was. So basically that's a thing that you might uh, be looking to. So I'm hoping to get it installed and running uh, until the end of the year. I'm not sure that's feasible because the end of the year is um, rapidly approaching. I'm filming this on December 25th. Um, so I'm not sure when I will be able to get that done, but I am really hoping to get it done uh, quicker. Uh, for that reason, I was actually considering going out today and buying a couple of uh, USB death adapters for this, uh, which is ironic considering that one of the reasons I wanted to do this was because the other ones weren't safe. Uh, but 
I did buy a couple of USB uh, cables, uh, one of these and uh, one here. I'm guessing these are modeled after some official kind of USB cables sold by some company, but I don't really care about that. And I'm gonna be uh, using those to get power to here. Um, and an R unit uh, basically be the brain box of the operation. Uh, so I'm gonna be posting updates on that on a future video. Uh, and as for now, I can just have a um, well, thing that will light up like this and just show you um, the resistance of the PCB is actually rather quite high. So. Here's something.